said to Nicodemus, except you be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus was sent forth from the Father to give you eternal life. It was God's plan to redeem you unto Him. Hi, welcome to Times of Refreshing. Hi, I'm Reverend Victoria Fury. So happy that you're joining every week to these programs. These programs are going to give messages of salvation, deliverance, and healing. And many times upon this platform, the Spirit of God moves and the gifts of the Spirit and manifestation and God is healing and restoring people right in their homes and hospital rooms. So you joined into the right program because on this program, you're going to get a, have an assurance and confidence of salvation and healing and deliverance, God's mercy and compassion for your life personally because we serve a personal Savior who is very interested in each person's life because you're created by Him and for Him. And He's reaching out to those that are without Him because He's not willing for you to perish but come to a total repent of heart before God and surrendering your heart to Jesus Christ and receiving Him as Lord and Savior. So happy that you joined today. And today we're going to have a message on the victory of Christ. Hallelujah. He is our victory. And his victory was won at the cross on Calvary when he redeemed mankind, when he shed his blood to remit sin. And he bore the transgression and the iniquity of every individual upon the earth, of all nations under heaven. He came for every nation, Jew and Gentile. Jesus personally bore everyone's transgression and iniquity upon himself. And he took 39 lashes upon his back for your healing. Jesus is the true shepherd. And the true shepherd gave his life for the sheep. And he is the door to the sheepfold. The Bible says that whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus, thou shalt be saved. So if we try to get in the sheepfold, the door, some other way, then we're a thief and a robber. But if we come through the door, who Jesus is the door, he's the one that opens that door, to the sheepfold. And when he opens that door, it's when a heart of a person has come to repent of heart before God. See, godly sorrow will lead you to a repent of heart. Repent of heart is thinking differently. It's turning the direction where you're going in life and acknowledging the Savior, that you and in and of yourself cannot save your soul, but Jesus Christ who came forth from the Father, came to save you, spirit, soul, and physical body, and to deliver your life from destruction. He gave his life a holy sacrifice on Calvary's cross, and that sacrifice was well-pleasing to our Heavenly Father because he took your personal judgment of sin upon himself. He bore the sin of many, And he delivered us of all of our offenses. God was in Christ Jesus. He was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing sin, but he was reconciling the world unto himself. And he did that by the shedding of his blood, the forgiveness of sins, remitting it at the cross, And God the Father raised him from the dead to justify you freely unto God and to declare his righteousness. Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness. Hallelujah. We're going to get into the word right now. If you have a Bible, you can join me. If you don't, just listen and be blessed by this message. Hallelujah. We're going to go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. 
starting at verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, if you turn to, if you hold your place there and you turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, it states that knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Notice how it says, by the faith of Jesus Christ. So it's by his faith that you're justified. And his faith, faith is a living faith because he laid his life down and he took it up again. That commandment he received from his father. And the justification of faith is when he was raised from the dead. He was raised from the dead for our justification. Justification of faith is just as if you never sinned. That's because he bore your sin who knew no sin to make you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. So you're justified by the faith of Christ. It's not trying to get any faith. You're justified by his faith, and it's believing on the name of the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved. And it says here, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So you're not justified by the law of Moses. You're not justified by works and performance. You're justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. It's simply putting your faith and trust in him, believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. For his name is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee bows in heaven. Every knee will bow upon the earth, and every knee will bow under the earth and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the word of God states that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the word was made flesh. That's Jesus Christ. He became put on human flesh. And, but he was holy and sacred, named by our Father, the name of Jesus. His name means to be recovered, to re be repaired, to be restored to make alive again, to be made whole. He came to bring you wholeness in your life. He came to repair your life. He came to recover your life. And he came to make you completely whole. Hallelujah. We'll continue on in 1 John chapter 5. Go to verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but... He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So it's when you are overcoming this world, it's because you're believing that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, it states, But thanks be unto God, who giveth us the victory... Through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's his victory. It's his victory that was won at the cross. The Son of God was manifested. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy sin. That sin has no more dominion over us. Because we're not under the law, we're under grace. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's by his grace that you're saved through faith. And who's that faith? By the faith of Jesus Christ. By grace, that means divine ability, favor. By grace, you're saved through faith. And we just read there in Galatians, you're justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. 
So by grace through faith, you're saved. You're saved. By grace, you're saved through faith, not of yourselves, but it's the gift of God. So the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Lord. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. It's only one name given, and that was Jesus. He was to save the people from their sins, and he did that at the cross and he poured out his soul uh, for every person's soul and made an atonement for the soul by the shedding of his blood. Hallelujah. And God raised the body of Jesus from the grave. And he justified you freely unto God to declare his righteousness. So he's the one that imparts the free gift of grace the divine ability and favor of God inside your spirit, and he imparts the free gift of righteousness in right standing before God because he took your place of judgment. He bore it. He bore your place of judgment and penalty of sin. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty Savior. Glory to God. The word overcometh in the Greek means a conquest, triumph, victory. So at that cross, it was a triumph, victory. Hallelujah. He destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and he brought eternal life and redemption to mankind. Hallelujah. The word victory in the Greek means conquest the means of success and victory so this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith and where is our faith our faith is in the son of god who loved us and gave himself for us we're justified by what the faith of jesus christ that is the victory glory to god in 1 John chapter 5, verse 6, This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Now in John chapter 19, verse 34, the soldiers that pierced Jesus' side, blood and water came out. So that scripture in 1 John chapter 5, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Out of his side came water and blood. Drop down to verse 4, or excuse me, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now the Word of God says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh. That is Jesus Christ. He was made flesh. Verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Drop down to verse 9. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. And that when, when he testified of his son is when Jesus came out of the river Jordan and the heavens opened up and the father spoke, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear him. Hallelujah. Verse 10, he that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, 
because he believes not the record that God gave of his son. Now, if you go to Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it states, The Spirit itself beareth witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, when you repent and you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Spirit of the Lord comes inside your spirit and you become born again. You're born of the Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You join on to the Lord by one Spirit, and that's the Spirit of Christ. And you're baptized into His Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah. So the Spirit itself will bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And also states in Galatians that you become a child of God by faith, in Jesus Christ. And so when you begin to hear the word of God and receive the word of God, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So faith is entering your heart, but it takes a connection on your side to believe and receive and, and act of your faith of calling upon the name of Jesus and acknowledging him that he is the Savior and that you are lost and you are in need of a Savior, and when you call upon his name, thou shalt be saved, because your faith is coming to Jesus Christ. His faith is entering your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Also, it states in John 1, 33, he that hath, he that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. So when you receive him, the Holy Spirit puts a seal on you. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit and promise. Glory to God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And that life is in his Son. The life is in his Son. First. Uh, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 4, it states, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Also in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. So God takes you from the kingdom of darkness into the light. When you start following him, the Bible says the entrance of his word brings light, brings understanding to the simple. Glory to God. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of a necessity be the death of a testator. So Jesus was the mediator between God and man. It states that in 1 Timothy 2.5. So there's no other mediator between God and man, but only one person, and that is Jesus Christ, because he gave his life a holy sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice that pleases God but the sacrifice of his only begotten Son for, for mankind. For God so loved you, He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. If you go down to 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. The name of the Son of God, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. That you may know that you have eternal life. So that you may know inside your spirit that you have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Drop down to verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Even, in, even his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Jesus Christ is the true God and eternal life. There is no other God but Jesus Christ. He is the one that God the Father raised from the dead, highly exalted him, and given him a name above every name, that every knee will bow, heaven and earth and under the earth, and declare, Jesus Christ is Lord. The Word of God states in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 5, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are, what, lost, and whom the God of this world, small g, which is the devil, whom Jesus destroyed at the cross, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. See, Satan will blind the minds of those that don't believe the gospel. It says, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, notice, he is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. That's who we preach. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. So the devil blinds the minds of those that don't believe the gospel. He wants you to believe in another God. He's called the Antichrist. He's anti-truth. He's anti-God. He's called the deceiver of the nations. He's also called the liar and the father of lies. He's called the destroyer. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. And that abundant life, that victory life, is when you call upon the name of Jesus and make him the Lord and Savior of your life. And you surrender your life to live for him and his gospel and no one else. Jesus said, except you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. It also states when he comes back, he said, pray that you may escape all these things that come upon the earth and to stand before the Son of God. That you may be counted worthy to stand before the Son of God. How are you going to be counted worthy to stand before the Son of God? Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his holy angels. And so... To be worthy is to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus. And your faith is in what he did on the cross. His, your faith is in what his blood that was shed to justify you freely unto God. Hallelujah. Go to Romans chapter 3. We'll go to Romans quickly. Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The Ten Commandments gave the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ, Notice, it's by the faith of Jesus Christ. Unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So it's the faith, by the faith of Jesus Christ. For all have sinned, coming short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ, 
whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Notice, faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. So it's declaring his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he, might be, that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. So he's the justifier of those that believe in Jesus. And so when you call upon the name of Jesus Christ and you're repenting in your heart, acknowledging I'm lost, and I don't have an assurance of salvation in my life. If I died today, I don't know if I'd be in the presence of Almighty God. You can have that assurance today, and you can know that you have eternal life. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you, Father, for pouring out your Spirit upon their families and their homes. I thank you, Father, for the Spirit of the Lord moving into their homes. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for opening their eyes that they will know and understand it is you, Jesus, that brings salvation to them. To say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I repent today and I ask for your mercy to forgive me. And I believe, Jesus, that you are the Savior. You are the Lord. And I put my faith and trust in you. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that you joined this program today. You have a wonderful week and a blessed week. God bless you for tuning in to Times of Refreshing. If you would like to support Times of Refreshing, please make donations to Victory Christian Church, care of Times of Refreshing at 112 Pine Street, West Union, Iowa, 52175. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.